very much. Um, it's an honor to be invited. I'm going to talk about the Hungarian legislation, uh, about the Hungarian media law, which was passed last year. And uh, I'm going to very briefly summarize the main problems with it and why it is contrary not only the not only the principle of press freedom, but also the rule of law in general and uh, democratic principles as such. Therefore, I start with the manner of the legislation, how it was passed. This legislative package, which consisted of four laws and some more ordinances, was discussed within the, in the summer of 2010 and uh, partly in winter of the same year. It was signed and promulgated within weeks and uh, stepped into effect within days, practically. Uh, it's effective from the 1st of January. But just, uh, I mentioned just the biggest part of the law, uh, the biggest part which we can call the actual Hungarian media law is uh, almost 180 pages long. So to give, um, a time span of about 10 days to step into effect for such a law is, uh, I think, without example, even in Hungary, but probably in other democracies. And, of course, there was no way for public discussion when a complete act was uh, submitted in uh, June last year and it was passed within four weeks or maybe five weeks. The same happened in the winter. Now, from now on, I've tried really to concentrate only the most uh, <coughs> problematic issues and not, not to give you the story behind, but um, if there is room for answering the questions, of course, I can talk more than this. Um, in my opinion, the biggest problem of the law is its scope. It covers printed and electronic press. Linear and non-linear television, which is supposedly normal in the European Union, also linear and non-linear radio, but also <coughs> printed press and online um, news portals. Um, yeah. uh, the, the next biggest problem is the authority itself. So we have a consolidated authority, which in fact is not a problem, of course, it covers media and telecommunication. Uh, but this, this authority has really expensive powers and almost all of these powers is concentrated in the hands of the head of the authority. So the head, the, the authority itself is not a body instead. In fact, it's one person, the head of the authority, who is appointed by the Prime Minister directly without any consultation with any bodies or political organs or whatever. And the term is for nine years, which means that today's prime minister defined the, this almighty person of the authority for nine years, which is uh, almost and a half for <coughs> uh, The media council, which um, is focused only on media and not on communication, is also part of the authority. And although its members, it's a body, uh, the head of the council is the same person as the head of the authority. So we, we again have the, the same person appointed by the prime minister. And the other members of this body are supposed to be elected by the parliament with a two-thirds majority, but practically uh, they were delegated and elected by the governmental uh, MPs only. Yes. Probably not. Fidesz has the first majority in Parliament, the governing party. And um, the opposition didn't have a chance to nominate and they didn't participate in the voting. Now, about, uh, I'm going to list very briefly the powers of the authority. The authority registered all media products, including printed and electronic press. Um, it decides standards, uh, frequency standards, although um, nowadays this applies only to radio, but still, the law, I'm not going to discuss how it is, but the law is 
the possibility for arbitrary decision in deciding frequency patterns. The authority may revive fines. Now, according to the proposed amendment of the law, uh, these fines could be collected like taxes. So, the right of execution is part of the decision of court. This has not been passed yet, and we don't know whether it will be accepted by the other <coughs> but uh, evidently this makes collection of these fees much quicker and uh, Appeal against the authority decision is only to administrative courts, which cannot examine the merit of the decision, only whether it was in accordance with the rules of the law. And also, these are different courts than those that discussed such decisions earlier. So, we, the new courts have to deal with this question, which has no um, experience in mediations. And supervisors of public service media. And um, just um, I'm going to unfold one point here. Uh, the authority has also extensive investigative powers. It may access any data, even secrets protected by law, may hear witnesses, even about secrets that they hold, and may use this information in any other procedure anytime later. If the information in market is not provided within the required time or in the required format, it may divide a fine up to 180,000 euros only for not giving out the information to any media outlet, whether print, online, or whatever. If uh, anyone who gets involved with the procedure as a witness, for example, even if he or she is only loosely connected to the media outlet against whom the procedure has started, so if such a person shows a behavior which may potentially hinder the process, the investigative process, he or she may be fined up to 3,600 euros, one million hundred points, or if it's an organization, then 90,000 euros for not cooperating with the authority. And um, now I'm going to show a slide. Um, so these, here you can see the powers of the authority. This power extends to electronic media, printed media, and online press and the public service media. So practically, the whole Hungarian media scene, the totality of all media outlet, and in addition, it claims uh, to cover not only Hungarian domestic, but also worldwide <laughs> media in case it has <coughs> an impact in Hungary or its, uh, its content is it directed to Hungary. Then I have another slide about public service media. Uh, I would say that public service media is practically overtaken by the government in Hungary <coughs> because uh, the previous companies have been centralized in one uh, organization. So all the newsrooms and editorials have been centralized, which in itself is not necessarily bad. So it can also be a rational decision. But this centralized uh, editorial organization is the so-called public service management and supporting fund, which is in the middle of this figure, and which is controlled and instructed by the head of the media council, who is in appointed by the Prime Minister, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, the four organizations that you see at the bottom are practically just empty forms uh, because they don't have uh, budget and they don't have staff. So these, these the names still represent the old public service media companies, but they're just shells of the old companies because the staff and that the budget and the incomes have all been, by force of the law, taken away and which um, <coughs> <coughs> word I should use to this public service management and support the fund. And the foundation is just a, a theoretical organization anymore because it, it, it's theoretically the owner of the four media companies, but uh, effectively it doesn't have a real power at all. 
And uh, it's the public foundation to the Lockheed Bank, uh, which uh, has uh, those democratic instructive bodies or which, which represent the principle of pluralism. But uh, this doesn't have any meaning anymore because the foundation is empowered to that fund, which is instructed by the head of the media council. I, I'm hope, I hope I'm not very complicated. Um, one thing both, yeah, the next important thing is uh, the, the content rules. To, I'd like to mention the content rules. So the problem is that the, these content rules are very vague. Uh, they are on the level of principles. But the problem with it is that violation of these rules can be punished with very high fines. Um, for example, for a national electronic media outlet, seven thousand, no, seven hundred twenty-two thousand euros uh, can be really fine if a uh, violation of uh, human rights is established by the authority. So the content rules are similar to respect of human rights, respect of personal rights of others, or the title of life, etc., which are obvious values. But these are values that should be judged by a court and not by the government to authority, according to the rule of law, I think. And um, in addition, the law duplicates, or in certain cases, triplicates the fora by which such a question can be decided. Because uh, the Hungarian legislative system still has it's, uh, not very liberal rules on the protection of uh, personal rights, um, reputation. For, for example, we have criminal defamation, two kinds. One uh, also you know, is uh, punishable to invite someone with an opinion, not only with a fact. And this is a crime. Okay? So you can't say that the previous uh, uh, regulation was uh, all too liberal. Uh, also, I think it's worth mentioning that the hate speech rule of the new act protects not only minorities but also majorities, which is very hard to imagine because if, uh, for example, an article incites majority, then probably it represents a minority opinion. So, punishing speech for inciting majority means punishing minority opinion. That's just my speculation. But I, anyhow, I can't imagine how uh, a majority could be excluded, because that's the wording of the law, that uh, if uh, some articulation is directed to the exclusion of a majority. OK, and uh, not less important is the one thing I'd like to mention is that, that the journalistic sources became unprotected. They were protected in Hungary uh, because the Act of Criminal Procedure allowed an exception for those who have to keep professional secrets. They could deny uh, giving the testimony. And of course, this truly is still in effect. The new media law says that, uh, or that the first sentence says that uh, media or that the um, journalists may protect their confidential sources, but the next sentence says that uh, any court or authority may oblige uh, the disclosure of sources in case of uh, national security, public order, which is already a very big category, and the prevention or disclosure of crime. And uh, relating to this, I would like to mention that if uh, defamation is a crime in Hungary, then prevention of a or, or the disclosure of a crime, um, which can be also defamation, could come up in every case of investigative journalism. So practically, there is no defense for journalists if they want to keep their sources confidential. 